Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and this is day 19 of Acrylic April. We're going to be painting this fabulous bowl of cherries. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi hey guys. He's going to be making sure that you can see every part of what I'm doing so that you can duplicate this for yourself at home. If you check the description down below, you're going to see a link to the website. And on that web page will be references you can download, extra videos to help you succeed at this painting no matter where you are in your painting journey. So if you're just starting out to if you're a few paintings in, those should help you out a lot. There's traceables. There's really everything you need, including exchanges for paint colors. If you're wondering, I don't have that one vermilion, but I need to know what other reds I can use. That is all on that page for you guys just waiting there. I am so excited to do the bowl of cherries today. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I think cherries are really gorgeous in art. I think they're a lot of fun. I think they're good subject matter. I'm a little nervous after the peaches, but I think we're going to really rock this today because it's day 19. Mm -hmm. And we're getting in shape, aren't we? We're getting our little art shape on. You guys are kind of knowing what my, what my every month is like. <laughs> <laughs> Though this is more of a month for me because I still have to do all my regular month stuff. <laughs> so it's really crazy time. It I'm is. ready to hop on in, John. All right, let's go. All right, boom. Oh, I just love this. So you can see that we've already put our acrylic ground on here and we've done our grid. If you're wanting to know how to do that and you've never seen that before, again, check out that web page because there's a video where I step by step explain how to do this. If you're not into gridding, use the traceable. It's not cheating. Um, I have a little gray strip here. You guys might notice I'm doing this just to make sure that I don't lose my values because sometimes when you get color involved, it's hard to see how light or dark something is. I have over here my acrylic paint. I've got cad yellow hue. I got vermilion. I got deep magenta. I have ultramarine blue. I have a uh, phthalo green, primary blue, burnt sienna, Mars black, and titanium white. And okay, so I think that's. Let me see if I can get this. I had this, I guess, off a little bit on its placement. So the paint might be a little bit off there. So that's hopefully a little bit better. I think you guys can see where stuff is. And What's wrong? I'll, oh, I just, I just had it placed wrong. So I put the paint oh. all centered and I had to scoot it up. So we have room to mix. Oh, okay. I'm just noticing that, you know, sometimes you just don't notice stuff till you're like in the painting and you're like, I don't know where I put my palette. That's so very, very strange. <sighs> oh, this day I'm ready to paint. Are you guys ready to paint? I'm ready. No. I'm not ready. I'm ready to watch. You're ready to watch. I can it, sit. John does a shockingly small amount of painting. Yep. I think I'm going to go ahead and start out with my number eight Cambridge brush. This is a bright, which means it's it's not quite as long out from the ferrule as like a flat. So the, that helps it be a little bit stiff and more in control for heavy body paint. I like that. And I'm going to start doing this sort of like deep, dark background as you do. And to do that, what I'm feeling I might do is grab a little of my ultramarine blue into my burnt sienna. These two together make a really lovely gray value. Just making sure it's pretty dark. And so I'm going to just get this on here. I don't have to be uh, super particular about the perfection of how I'm painting it. I'm trying to paint loose. That's been our goal this month is to loosen up. It's real easy to get very tight. And that means super precision oriented in your artwork. But in that, sometimes you lose some of the fresh expression that you need to have in your art. So taking a month to loosen up is always a good idea, even if you enjoy being a highly realistic painter. Now, our light source, guys, is coming over here from the left. So as we're painting this in, we're going to be paying attention to that. So uh, like the even the ground here might be a little lighter. On the left hand side, let me turn this over so I have control. That's been my big work on uh, this. I think this month has been just learning to not let it, you know, uh, get me out of my body position and ending up in bad body positions. I'm going to put some stronger ultramarine blue coming out here. And this is going to be kind of like for my shadow, as you do right under this little cherry and then I'll come down and I haven't rinsed out my brush. So all that pigment is essentially in there. And I'm going to do a similar thing here and catch some of the shadow that I might be seeing around that cherry. 
See how we're getting a little shadow? You just go right back into your mix of blue, brown, and white. And fill that in. And you'll see the shadows actually kind of reveal themselves fairly quickly. Add shadows on your painting just by the value of the paint. Isn't that fun? Yeah. And I like that about painting very much. And I like that about painting loosely. Is you can get a lot with a little. And it teaches you so much about how painting composition actually works. Make sure that that's there. Because the little stem shadow might cast out a bit from itself. So that's always good to add. Now, as I'm coming around, I'm going to just go ahead and get back into my altering blue under this bowl. Pretty lovely stuff. And that gives us a bit of that shading that we're looking for of value saying, ah, oh, it's a little bit darker here and we can see things. If you need a second, bit of the ultramarine don't be afraid to grab it because you know you're talking about your shadows so it's okay to grab an extra little bit right just making sure that you've got that going now one of my very favorite colors that is on this piece is the bowl super excited about the bowl but the base of the bowl is basically going to be a, a almost a phthalo turquoise. We're going to make a, a turquoise color, which is our primary blue and our phthalo green. And we'll start with a, the darkest value of that, which would be down here. Right here at the edge of the bowl, wouldn't it? Kind of coming up as we round it up. Another place that we might have a little more of it, and I might go a little more to the blue, using more primary blue. Just trying to catch some of those different values. There we go, into the bowl. Because it's quite dark inside the bowl, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The bowl not being quiet transparent. <laughs> what? I said, I'm awfully quiet today. I'm just You watching. are. What's going on with you being so quiet? You know, I've just, I've just been watching. Really, Sometimes is it, some day you know some days I'm just fighting to get a word in edgewise with you. Did you, did you ever know that um, <laughs> on and off the show? Did you ever know that um, <laughs> two talkers marry? It's a problem. Um, did you ever think that you would be like watching an art show? I'm adding a lot more white to this mix and coming around, just creating this lighter value around the bowl as you, mean, you do you mean when i was a young man just thinking like what am i gonna do with my adult life watch my wife paint <laughs> i was gonna i was gonna get really good at watching paint dry yeah that was like your plan right that's what you put on your college app <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just adding a little darker color where it's necessary and i can pull that in there to that roundabout it's taken a strange set of skills to be able to do this to do what we do? To, to, to capture this, what we do live. Does... It is a weird set of skills, isn't it? I'm going to get a little more of my it blue is. and green together. You're very brave. Me? You're brave. I'm just, yeah. I'm just painting back here. I know how that works, right? Like, I have a pretty good idea how it's going to go when I'm painting. Yeah. Not that hard. You know? Now, as I'm coming around, you know, you can add more of your... I'm going to get more of a mid-range as I'm coming up the bowl. I think I'm going to try to go ahead and put my patterns back in. I drew them in and I really like them. And I did them a bit in the gray scale study, so I think I'm going to like it a lot here. I'm just trying to capture that bowl. After the peaches, I'm ready to, to get back into still lives. Be still my still life. And I'm just working my values. As you do. As we all do. This is really good. I like, the, I like the blue. It's so soothing. It makes my brain just go. Oh, mm. Color is powerful to your brain. Never, ever doubt it. 
Not that you were doubting it. I'm not, I'm not saying you guys were doubting it. But it really is a powerful, powerful aspect in your brain. I'm going to grab a little more of my white into this. And, you know, coming up here, perhaps lighten some of this. Just a touch. Because it would see just a little bit more light, given our light source. That's nice, isn't it? Fun stuff. You gotta love a painting a bowl. Well, I gotta love painting a bowl. You don't gotta love painting a bowl. I'm gonna grab just my primary blue mm -hmm. right on the edge of this. And I'm gonna come here just a couple places. It's so funny. I keep getting it, but there's like not enough on the bristles to offload. <laughs> I keep having to go back. I'm like, what is the deal? So just working a couple of these dark values when I'm trying to talk about certain aspects of this. Catching it as I go around. And I may have to come trim it back just because of how thick my brush wants to behave. You can see I'm working that. Still trying to be loose, but I got to work that. Remember if you're doing a bristle and filament brush or just a straight bristle brush, that's super important to pull as much of the water out of it as you can. Now while I'm here, I'm going to grab just a little bit of my white. It's okay if a small amount of blue goes into it, but I do want some. I'll make sure it's on both sides so I can give my little lip here a little. Little bit of that touch up. There we go. Never, never give up. Just catching a little white highlight. And what's wonderful is if it gets out of hand for you, all you've got to do is come back with your bowl color and you can just trim it right up. So you don't have to lose it. You can keep it. It's no problem. You can make sure that you're all good as you come around. You're just trying to show that you've got this nice little blue bowl. Now, I'm feeling like if I took a little of my pad yellow into my turquoise mix and grabbed a bit of white, might be nice happening to see it like right here. Sort of talk about just a warmth that might be occurring. There we go. And that's just going to make that bowl seem... I don't know, a little more interesting, a little more exciting. It's definitely a little more blue. It's a little more blue. And another little bit of my altering, just to make sure that right down. under the bowl there's some depth. And here's a fun thing, I can come into it with some green and it, it will make it feel like there's a cast reflection from the bowl. So that's sort of nice. Just grounding it. I'm going to turn that up a little bit so we can see it. Now the cherries. Oh, the cherries. Got, so many cherries, right? There's some really dark values in this. I don't think I could have faced this if I hadn't done the value study. Don't think I could have dealt with it at all. Now, I'm sure I'm going to have to back the camera back down. I just I just raised yeah. it up a little bit so we could see in these dark values. I want them to see the subtleties of those tones. I definitely am going to want to mix my vermilion and my magenta as a beginning space. So, you know, And maybe I'll take that and where I'm kind of seeing some redder spots and some of the cherries, that might help me even before getting my dark values in because these can become so visually noisy so quick, can't they? Yeah. Now, you work in a very, I, I, I really enjoy this sort of painterly, loose style. We are this month, aren't we? But now, is would you consider right that impressionistic? Well, yes. Yeah, whenever you're doing um, anything that's very loose and expressive, it's taking an impression in the moment. You're not trying to render the moment in historic detail. Or realistic, objective detail. Right. Well, that's you're... the history of it, right? Because right. it used to be art was our only record of a moment. So it was kind of a big deal. 
Right. That you be as honest about what you were seeing as you could be. And then, you know, once that was established, I'm just grabbing some more vermilion just to make sure I've got this nice little edge here. And already I think we're going to see some cherries from this fabulous little version of what I'm doing. Um, you know, and that was it. And then, you know, somebody wealthy could like pay you money to be less than honest on your artwork. And, and that's how a lot of marriages were arranged. Because <laughs> you don't think about this. He used to send a portrait, right? You'd have to hire, like, it was like a thing to be an artist. Like, they would have to hire a portrait painter and that would get shipped. And then you would have an impressionist come over and paint your. Yeah, that was not, that's probably why it was not initially popular because people were like, I don't need an impression of my portrait painting from getting, I need to know, like, they need to know I look good. <laughs> so, yeah, this was. Th I'm going to add when... these reds everywhere I'm seeing highlights. So you see I've got some here and some right here, some right here. Here's what you need to pay attention to is that the light is coming from here. So you're going to be lighting these cherries with that in mind. Okay, back to I just wanted to reiterate that just in case we weren't saying. I didn't know. No, no, it's good. Sometimes it's hard to no. know. Ah, I'm losing my stems, but I'll I'll get them back in a minute. I'll get them back in a minute, guys. So mm -hmm. we just this, see then we get talking. Cinnamon will get to talking to me, and then I get comfortable talking to her. No, I like it when you talk to me. Like. See, I was gonna say, okay. used to send portraits to people. If you were gonna swipe left, that took sending a boat. <laughs> Is over, Shipper's gotta go lay down. <laughs> oh, swipe left for sending a boat, man. You'd really think about it, wouldn't you? Before you ship the boat out, you'd be like, I really gotta know I like her. I can't like go on like an expedition date. No, no, no. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Human beings are so crazy. It's, it's, you know, what's funny though is that it hasn't changed in how many hundreds to thousands of years we are a predictable species <laughs> nothing else. we just got good at it, doing it faster we did didn't we we got good at doing it you faster know, we're like well, and no boats less boats i think that's what have, happened is that we got better at doing it faster and now we send less boats and and now you don't need a portrait painter you have filters for your selfies I feel like this could be a whole lecture series. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I feel like this is so true. I'm grabbing some more vermilion just to warm some of this up as I'm coming through. So a lot of times I'll do my deepest shadows first, but when I have a very complicated pattern, let's be honest, these cherries laying on cherries is very visually complicated. Um, maybe I should apply this to what I'm painting uh, roses. Sometimes by catching those highlights, it really, really helps me find objects. If you did the realistic multi-day still life uh, with me, and if you didn't know that was a thing, we did a thing and it was, people got some crazy results. Um, we did this again on the grape, where the grapes were. So you'll see some of these techniques. And guess what? That's the other place to use your PY53 Naples yellow. <laughs> so I did not understand why that was such a magical color until I watched the color journey thing. Yeah? Yeah. No, I get it. You get it. It's like, I, it's like, it's, you know, I try not to pull in all my expensive, I, someday I'll like pull my whole like personal palette into this hot mess and be like, these are the colors that I feel are super important. I'm just, as this dries, I'm just pulling up even more red because uh, my paint is, uh, usually I paint with a professional grade paint and the difference between Professional grade paint and entry paint is the amount of pigment that you might have in there. Though I think there's only a couple student paints that you should spend your money on. Just an opinion that I have. Nobody needs to write me any hate mail. <laughs> uh, maybe hit a little hint of red there. What are we doing? I'm just trying to think, like, where am I missing my reds? But here, I feel like there's maybe... Miss one here? I don't know. You know, we'll catch a highlight where we can. Maybe we'll put imply a highlight there. 
Now I'm gonna. There, we've got a lot of really great questions coming in. A lot of I, new. I painters. would love that as we're looking for all of our highlights. That would be amazing. What I'd like to do is is if if you were new to this and you just found us and you just got just started, this moment. Oh, this is crazy. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Where, where should they go to start this? If you've never, ever, ever painted before, do some of the one hoot and Q-tip paintings. Uh, pick lessons that are under 40 minutes. Um, there's some fun finger painting ones. There's one, things that don't put a lot of pressure on you as an artist, because believe it or not, you may have a lot of emotional charge on starting painting and you and new painters are super hard on themselves in a really really intense way about their art so if you can start out and keep it light so you can recognize that it's fun um i, I would even challenge the chat to say what was your favorite easy lesson easy and if you go to our website you can search one hoot lessons or q-tip lessons and it will pull up all the videos that we have we have like 900 and then this is the coolest thing that we do you can go to that page and I'll say, hey, I think this is one hoot. That's our easiest rating. And the community will come by and they'll be like, no, no, it's two hoot. <laughs> so you'll not only get my opinion on the difficulty level, but you'll get the opinion of other new artists like yourself and what their experience was because everybody comes by and votes. I think I'm like the only creator who's like, what's your thoughts on it? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to take a, my vermilion over here. And I'm going to grab a little bit of my uh, phthalo blue. And as you can see, it's quite dark, right? It's a very, very dark color, isn't it? It's almost a chromatic black. And I'm going to come on the back side of these cherries with this very, very dark, dark color. Around the bottom a bit and lightly dust. I'm trying to be loose, but, you know, I still got to... Still got to see stuff here. Put that up there. And now you're like letting some of the red peek out. Now right there in that corner, I have to say some of this stuff is deeper. So all I got to do is come back with some pure blue. Look at that. And I can deepen some of these values a bit. Leaving some of them purple. <gasps> so pretty. Come back over here. So this first range that we've got going, that's a, that's a bit of a purple. You know, and if you come here and you're like, oh, that had a bit of a highlight, red highlight, you can come and just, you know, add it into the distance. You're not, you're not trapped. Got that little stem going off, a little bit of that dark color coming up. I think this time, like, definitely I can see the still life is already stronger, just in every conceivable way that it could be stronger. And the reason I'm going to come through, do small amounts of work, and then put in some deep shadows is so that, again, I don't lose myself in the visual difficulty of the whole lesson. Mm, so That makes sense. Yeah, where I'm going to really put my deep values, I've got to come here, and I'm using just my pure primary blue. Talk about some of these deeper, deeper values. Now I'm going to send an art high five to Joe. Hi, I Joe. accidentally kicked the, clicked the wrong button. and uh, Did you mute Joe? I muted and unmuted her, so I'm sorry. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> just, you know, uh, she's, on, uh. she's on her big screen, so she was watching. I just, you know, love to our Sherpets who've been here. I'm multitasking. I just. It got away from you, babe. Yeah, and I just, I just want her to know because she may have been on her big screen and not seen it come across her, uh, her mobile device. That you know, we love you guys, and I just, you know, didn't mean to mute you. Sometimes that'll to. happen. We try to moderate yeah. carefully, but it's not like we we make mistakes on occasion. <laughs> Sometimes we don't. <laughs> it just depends. If ever you have a problem with any of um, our videos, you you know, write support at theartsherpa dot com. And we will help you out, let you know what's going on. Well, and, you know, Sherpa, you got some folks out here, uh, specifically uh, uh, Miss SG. I'm not sure how to pronounce her. Skyo? She's, she'd like to thank you because you've helped her get through, help revive her art, 
art Yay. and help her get back into uh, painting and and through some dark times that she had. So she really appreciates you, you know, being here and helping. I am really glad to hear that. I really, really am. And sometimes, guys, I get tongue-tied trying to relay the messages because, you know, I'm processing through them and trying to make sure that, you know, I uh, uh, convey the this to you, you know, to Cinnamon. And I just, you know, we can't say how much we appreciate you guys coming and talking and sharing with us your journeys and, and what you've done and your art. So, anyway. So what you see me doing is finding my deep values into this into this piece. So that is the vermilion in the phthalo blue. Just getting some deep. So this those give me this sort of deep purple value. And I'm going to have to put my stems back in at a later date. They're just going to have to come in later. That's just what they're going to have to do, man. <laughs> And a lot of this is going to happen when we add highlights or as we pull some things up, right? Like this, this one right here, and maybe I can come up with a little. You know how they have that almost like peach bum bum shape? Yeah, yeah. So when those are in, then you can look for your deep deep values, which again I'm doing with the primary blue. Wow, this is just the values in this are so deep. It and is a deep value painting. I keep, I'm afraid that I don't have the camera turned up enough, but I, then when I see your hand come in there, I see the edge of the surface. It's like, oh no, it's. It's down. there. It's just that your, these woods are lovely, dark and deep. Yeah. These cherries are deep. And we have to deal with that, you know. How we get the depth in the bowl and how we talk about those little elements within the bowl and where those deepest, darkest values, you know, are. And it's a little different, right? We didn't use the ultramarine. We used our phthalo. We didn't use black, which is interesting in and of itself, right? It is. Now, you may have noticed if you did the uh, value study with me, let me get a little more background color. I see a little spot I didn't paint. You guys always catch me when I do that. You're like, hey, you forgot a spot. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, maybe. Maybe a spot was forgotten. You can always come back in look, and just make sure you catch it. Sometimes when you're trying to get all the stems, you know, drawn in, you'll lose some of your, some of your depth. Lose your depth, man. Never, never use your depth. So I'm going to come right here, and I'll have to put these stems back because I just want this to have a deep, deep shadow. Cause th these guys are creating these depth of shadows into the bowl. So we're doing really good there. Complicated, but now, now it's all a bowl of cherries. <laughs> right? So we're going to add a little more red into that mix where we had the blue. And you can even add a little bit of your white right so here we go and so we can begin to show some value changes from the cherries where it's dark up into them and you can always see like where are you at in the value You've ever, never used this gray thing, so you go here, you can see it's much darker than that. You can go here, it's not really uh, middle gray, it's a little darker than middle gray, but it's right there. So I know even though I've added white, even though I have those colors, it's still in the value space that I need to be. Fun trick you might not know worked. And if you didn't, now you do. Also a good way to talk about, you know, maybe some hidden, hidden highlights. So you're working from darkest to lightest? I am now. So I've got my, not quite my high highlight, but I got my red values in there. Yeah. And what I'm doing right now is just making sure that the color where the depth is, there it is right here, that I've got little reflections 
like right here there should be like a little reflection and then there's some little reflection here we're just go saying from the depth where the cherries are there's a bit you can see little little bits of things right not the full deal but we're starting to get a sense of it it's really all going to be though now in the highlights i'm going to let everything rest for a second and i'm going to grab my number four brush i'm going to do something kind of cheeky i'm going to take my blue and my green again and make my turquoise maybe this time i'm going to add a little black to it so we're shading it right mm -hmm. and i'm going to come here and i'm going to make a little dot because i did think that this was really nice oh that's the uh the shad the, the that would be the dark value yeah, the dark values there around those little mm -hmm. texturally bits i'm sure those have names i am sure sure they have names i'm going to call them textury bits i will allow it i think that's good but i'm allowing it today because <laughs> i don't know what else i would call them <laughs> like i don't know what else i'd say that would be really scary if I had to like really make sense of that. I had to make some other name for them. So the reason I'm doing this dark value, the reason you're doing this dark value, is that we're going to come back with some highlights, which is really going to reveal in fast order these little decorative bits. And you can see they're like a they're like a little tadpole shape. And you can come here and be like, oh, there's a, a little bit of a one that we can kind of see and. But that one's a little bit looser. So there's a little bit of that bowl happening. I can't really do my um, stems until I get all, all, all. I'm going to get this quite light. You see, I'm getting the turquoise, but I'm going quite light. Mm -hmm. Not my lightest light, but much lighter. I'm leaving those shadows and they'll be stronger on that side. Right, because they, they cast a little bit of a shadow and so they're stronger on that side. The dark color helps me like see that. Now I'm going to get some just white. Not quite that big on the brush. And I'm going to add the highlight where they are, the little white highlights of hot reflection. Loosely, but it's there. And now that bowl has those, and I think that's really lovely. It's lovely. Okay. It seems we need some green. Well, not quite yet. They're cherries. They're a little flat. Oh, it's true. They are flat cherries. So I'm going to take a know. little of my vermilion, I and I'm going to get some of my yellow into it. Not too much. I'm just warming it a smidge. This is where you add that hot spot, huh? I'm going to add some hot spots oh, to my cherries. That just, kapow. Right. That's what cherries have. They have little hot spots, and I haven't even gotten into the reflections yet. I know. This is where you go, man, this painting seems really dark to, oh, there it is. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> <Not appropriate. laughs> I, just, I think it's appropriate. It's just funny to see. <laughs> we are a function of pop culture. We are something. You know, like all things, art oh, look, is I'm a just... reflection of life. <laughs> Now we're just pulling these. Get super deep or something. Yeah. Well, that's what we're supposed to do is get super deep. This is a pretty deep painting. Look how deep those values are. I mean, that's it incredible. Is. It's a completely deep painting. My segue. Ba -dum -bum. I really do like how, at, because you went in and put all those, those layers of darkness, it just so 
incredibly makes the cherries pop now. The cherries need to pop, pop, pop. There we go. They seem okay. They're all right. What could we do next? Well, here's a weird thing that we're going to do next. We're going to take a little of our phthalo blue and, uh, not phthalo blue, primary blue and phthalo green. And a smidge of our white. I'm going to add a little touch of blue there. Touch of blue. That's interesting. Right here. Not everything. Yeah, you're constantly teaching my eyes to see new things. There we go. It's a start. We're not all the way there, but it's a start. <gasps> this one has a nice little hot spot we can talk about. A good hot spot. Ooh, what do we what do we got? We got that one. That one has a nice little ugh, highlight. And then this one almost all the way around. But I won't do the blue all the way around. Just some. Just where I see those slight hinges of blue in that white reflection. They are there. They are there. Super duper there. So there's a weird bit there. Again, there. So we're starting to kind of see our cherries, right? She's pretty. They're kind of neat. So the next bits, I'm going to get right into my white, guys. Just right into my white. Hopefully some of these are dry enough. To just put a touch there. Just looking for those little white reflections. Any place I'm seeing those, and then where they're heavy, I'm going to put them heavy. Look at our cherries. So shiny. That's crazy. Definitely pulling those out. Fun. Mm -hmm. Just working that a little bit. We've hit that eight minute lull. Have we? Seven seven minute lull. I think I'm just concentrating on where my reflections go because it's a big part of what I got going on. It's the Sherpa lull. <laughs> Is it something? But those, they, you, I mean, like you did make those cherries just have all the reflections. You know, and you can always come back in. Feel like, okay, so you've got that in and you're like, if it's still not red, get your magenta. And where you need it, come back in. You can always evaluate. If you, if you have so much color shift that you lost some of your red, put it back. See, I'm easily putting it back. Yeah. So I'm not stressed. Not worried. If anything got away from me, so easy to fix. Just red it up. So I don't even have any alizarin in this palette, which is what I'd normally do cherries with. But I'm okay. Now, this painting is going to need some stemmy finishes, and that's going to be a whole journey. Mm. Whole journey. So, a little bit of my green. I'm going to grab some of my yellow. 
I don't mind if a little red gets in it. Isn't that crazy? But it will actually benefit me. And I'm going to pick my most bottom stems. Actually, let's, let's start here because this one doesn't have anything going on. That's in the way of it. This one's got a little, this one comes off a bit in the distance. And it's got a little bit of a tip there. Who's on the bottom here? Okay, I think I see one over here. Easy to get to. Going off. I see a little stem peeking up there. A little hint there. I'm just getting those little hints of stems. There is a bottom one coming from this one across. All the way over to here. Let me get a little more yellow on my brush. That one's pretty cool. Then there's a stem kind of loosely talked about there. There is one coming from here up. And if I get a little red into it in my yellow, it'll almost make a brown, but it'll look like what I've got there. You can, uh, I see a little highlight, so I'm going to put some white on that stem. So we're just, we're still painting the stems in a thoughtful way. A little green. My yellow and green. This one right dun -dun -dun here. And I'm going to maybe put this here. Get over there. Talk about how that could cross. Maybe a little white for the base because these have been a little lighter. And yellow, I'm getting this little kind of weird grip of color for the end of that stem. So many stems. A little what water in there. A little more of my yellow into the sort of mishmash green. This one has a little stem that comes around. And again, a pretty good highlight. I'll just grab some yellow and white into that. It's happening right here. And a little bit right there. Maybe a little bit at the end of that one. I'm going to find some highlights on my stems. All oh, your stems have no highlights. Doing pretty good. Look at our cherries having some stems. I bet you were like, this will never be painted. <laughs> now, I don't want to get too many more in there. And here's why. They're, it's pretty busy. But I do think the stems coming from here are valid. So I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. I'm going to load up with some green. I'm going to come again and get some yellow. And this stem kind of wishbones back into the dark. And it has a little thread that comes out. Really nice little stemmage. It's okay if you grab a little bit of the yellow and red and some white. Because we've got to highlight some of that. And just highlight that a bit. And then we have the little stems that are popping out of our bowl. When that is all done, we can look at what we've got. And I think I'm going to take my green and blue and a smidge of white and sign.
daily painting, Jerry accomplished. Very involved bull. I mean, there was a lot going on there, wasn't there, guys? Wasn't it a lot? I need to smile more when I paint, but I'm such a concentrator. So concentrating. So I'm just picking a color that does it, you know, it'll be legible. You can see it's my signature, but it doesn't just take the whole piece and I'm gonna turn around. Boom de boom. I think it's really good. <laughs> pop, 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 pop. <sighs> Life is a bowl of cherries. Mmm, that is just fantastic. I hope you feel like yours, the way I'm feeling about mine right now. Go ahead and hashtag it. Please, you know, Acrylic April 2019, hashtag Acrylic April. Come to our Facebook group, follow the webpage. Don't forget to subscribe. That's where you get the notifications. We are always doing free, amazing education events like this. This is not something we're going to be doing one and done. You want to know how to paint? The resources are here. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.